Welcome to our webinar about the HPTLC Pro system, Carmack's new approach to automated quality control. My name is Melanie Prosad and I'm the Scientific Business Development Manager at Carmack and also the editor of the CBS Journal. Today I would like to start a bit different. So first I would like to invite you to a look back with Dr. Eike Reich. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eike Reich, and you can call me the DLC guy if you like. First thing, guess how old I am? Well, I'm 60. That means I am old. You know, when I was born, DLC was already old. And when the first book of TLC was created in 1962, it filled about 500 pages, it was edited by Egon Stahl. And at that time, the entire knowledge of TLC was condensed in book form. Five years later, the second edition came out and had another 500 pages added to it. At this time, TLC was in full swing, so that was the time when I entered school. In 1975, Merck introduced the first plate with small particles. They called it the HPTLC plate, the high performance plate. So in technical terms, HPTLC was born. But it took quite some time before it actually took attention in the community. In 1980, there was the first international seminar or conference on high performance thin air chromatography in, by Durkheim. Later on, this symposium became the so-called Interlaken Symposium, and every four years there was an international conference on the subject. So the technique had some academic credit. In 1988, this was about the time when I did my PhD, HPTLC was in full swing in academia, and the first journal, or the first dedicated journal to Planar Chromatography was created, the Journal of Planar Chromatography. And that time was the time when people thought about how do we call what we do? And they thought about planar chromatography to differentiate themselves from TLC, which is just the old technique. In HPLC, there was a parallel development and it started in 1976 with Snyder and Kirkland's book on modern liquid chromatography. From that time on, HPLC had a steep uh, impact on the analytical world. For a long time, so almost two decades, TLC and HPTLC and planar chromatography and HPLC coexisted. So there was competition between these techniques to enter the market of the pharmaceutical analysis because this is the application where there was a lot of money and safety and quality and all this came together and there was a fierce competition about linearity and sensitivity and reproducibility. At that time, HPTLC, instrumental TLC, planar chromatography, had scanning densitometry and was a really powerful technique. HPLC still thought about how do we best fix pulses in our baseline or detector shifts and so on. But when we look at today, we see HPLC somewhere else. It's a fully automated technique, high resolution, high performance, high throughput, high everything. And TLC, well, TLC is still the same. So today, why do we need TLC? because TLC costs no money. With about 50 units of whatever currency you're living with, you can buy a minimum TLC setup. You need a capillary, a plate, a pickle jar, and maybe a smartphone, but it's not part of your instrumental analysis, but it's part of your daily life. And then you can do TLC. So TLC is extremely flexible and it can tackle almost any analytical problem up to a certain level. Over the years, we have tried to establish 
HPTLC or planar chromatography as an improvement of TLC, but we have forgotten that it is the simplicity, the low cost aspect that keeps it alive. So today, there are millions of plates being sold every year for applications which are still at the same level that we have seen in the books by Stahl. So, what are we going to talk about now? What is HP TLC? HP TLC is not just high price TLC. HP TLC is, for the most part, standardized TLC. The breakthrough that Stahl with his book has accomplished was that he took the knowledge of his time and put it together and put some red line forward that allowed people to get similar and reproducible results. This was the beginning of introducing TLC into the pharmacopoeias worldwide as the first liquid chromatographic um, technique for quality control. If something is in an official compendium, then it has a very high inertia. And it's rather kicked out than being modernized. And that what happened to that's what happened to some of those old TLC methods. They were powerful and then IR techniques came for identification and HPLC techniques came for impurities and assays and TLC just left the arena without being missed. It took quite a while for the pharmacopoeias to realize that there is more to the HP than just looking at plates and deciding whether a zone is green or blue or maybe gray. In the late 90s, around the turn of the century, some people thought that it would be a good idea to utilize the other aspects, additional elements that we can derive from planar chromatographic separations, keeping all the advantages alive but going a step further. And when you think about the pharmacopoeia as a book that uh, is providing a reference, the uh, approach is that anybody could repeat this kind of work and get to a certain level of similarity in their results. And for that, we needed standardization. So in 2005, the European pharmacopoeia and then also the United States pharmacopoeia introduced HPTLC as a miniaturized form of TLC, assuming that as well as the old, the new technique are following standard concepts. But those standardized conditions have never been defined for TLC. HPTLC conditions were first defined in the pharmacopoeia. And from that time on, these two techniques began to coexist. In 2005, HPTLC was written in the European chapter 2227 and in the United States Pharmacopoeia chapter 621. It still took more than one and a half decades to go to the next route to separate HPTLC from the classical approach of TLC. For that, the important thing is that we have to think more broadly. TLC is done by comparing A to B on the same plate. HPTLC can be done on one plate and compared to another, or to an image that is part of a standard. That requires that people work more reproducibly, more predictably. For that, we need system suitability tests. For this, we need um, good SOPs and we need validated methods. So this is what happened between 2005 and 2015. After several collaborative trials, the pharmacopoeias, both the European and the United States pharmacopoeia, introduced a separate chapter on high performance thin layer chromatography. With these two chapters, for the first time, we have a very defined and stringent standard operating procedure for doing HPTLC. And in practice, that should enable anyone who does HPTLC to get the result as it is described in a standard. Thanks a lot, Eike. 
So now I would like to show you a video about Kamak that you know who we are and what we do. Kamag, a Swiss company specializing in the development and production of high-end instruments for high-performance thin-layer chromatography, Kamag is world leader in this analytical field with more than 60 years of experience. Wherever analytes have to be analyzed in complex sample mixtures, our high-end instrumentation can be the analytical method of choice and leads to a reliable result. Our technology is widely used in the life science industry in the quality control of foods and herbal drugs, in the analysis of environmental contaminants and in forensic toxicology. CAMAG convinces its customers through know-how, innovation and quality. Our products are truly Swiss made and have an excellent reputation throughout the world. Carefully selected partners form CAMAG's worldwide sales network. They provide competent advice to customers, guarantee reliable service and offer targeted training courses. These partners are either subsidiaries or local distributors who are in close contact with the dedicated specialists in our headquarters in Mutens, Switzerland. For CAMAG and its partners, personal relationship matters most. So CAMAG has a completely new website since last year and there you can find all devices and instruments for TLC and for HPTLC. So we have three segments. In the TLC segment are the devices for manual TLC that are mainly used for qualitative purposes. Then we have the HPTLC segment with mainly software controlled instruments that are used for qualitative and quantitative HPTLC. And we have the new HPTLC Pro segment the HPTLC Pro is the first fully automated system for HPTLC and this was designed for routine QC labs that have a high sample throughput. So all the three segments are supported by the same software VisionCats. VisionCats is Carmack's HPTLC software, but it also supports manual steps for reporting purposes. So it's also possible to have a combination of TLC, HPTLC and HPTLC Pro steps. But for sure, if you have the entire HPTLC Pro system, you have then the full automatic HPTLC options. Then you can submit up to five analysis files and the system will run itself. Besides the control of the instruments, the software also allows to evaluate the generated data. So with VisionCats you can do a quantitation. We have implemented features like related substances, calculation of limit tests and also to do a multi-level calibration or single level calibration. With the software you can compare images, profiles and you can also compare UV spectra. And those also from different plates, not only from the same plate. So the VisionCAD software harbors a method library with ready to use methods. And all implemented default settings are in full agreement with the general chapters of the USP and the European Pharmacopoeia for performing standardized HPTLC. Also, HPTLC offers an option for 21 CFR Part 11. HPTLC consists as TLC of individual process steps and the major steps are application, development, derivatization and detection. And if needed, HPTLC can easily be coupled to mass spectrometry with a TLC MS interface. For the detection, we have either the image-based detection with the TLC visualizer or the scanning densitometry with the TLC Scanner 4. And with the TLC MS interface, you can select zones, elude them and transfer them to any mass spectrometer available in your LCMS infrastructure. So here you can see the HPTLC Pro system. The HPTLC Pro is a modular system. The modules can be used standalone or they can be combined to a system. You can see now six modules and I have mentioned before five steps. 
because now for the entire HPTLC Pro system, you have here on the left side first the module blade storage. The module blade storage is needed to automatically feed the system with clean blades that it can run, for example, even overnight. Then we have the module for application, the module for development, the module for derivatization, the module for detection, and we have the module MS interface. Last year, Karmak has launched the first two modules, the module application and development, and the other modules will be launched sequentially over the next two years. So here you can see a short teaser video. The plate is inserted into the system, then the samples are applied, the application is done laser controlled, and we have then here the insertion into the developing chamber, then the derivatization process, then it goes into the detection module and finally we have the coupling to mass spectrometry. The Carmack HPTLC Pro stands for Automation, Reproducibility and High Sample Throughput. Within the system the HPTLC plate is transported via the conveyor and each plate is held by a carrier. During the entire HPTLC, proce HPTLC process, the location of the plate is known and therefore we have a full traceability for CGMP compliance. So what is new about the module application? The module application has a laser controlled needle distance and we have a precise application of the required sample and standard solutions. Then there are two rinsing solutions for proper cleaning of the syringe and the second rinsing solution is also used to generate a separation bubble to prevent cross-contamination. The rack of the application module can hold up to 75 vials and those 75 samples can be applied on up to five HPTLC glass plates without manual intervention. The module application harbors a syringe that has a serial number and each syringe is delivered with a unique serial number. So here you can see the module application. All modules have the same design and the same footprint and the module application has on top three bottles. So one bottle is for the waste and then we have one bottle for the rinsing solution one and one bottle for the rinsing solution two that is also used to generate the separation bubble. Then we have a carrier to hold the plate. So each module is delivered with two carriers and we have the rack that holds the wilds. So what is new about the module development? The module development has a completely new design chamber geometry. The distance between the surface of the stationary face and the chamber wall is kept small, is very small. And by this, we can have a fast activation and preconditioning. This is also supported by a circulating gas phase. And this is one of the real innovations here. So in the module development, we keep the gas phase under control. And also we keep the level of the developing solvent constant. We have three bottles for up to three different developing solvents. So if you submit five analysis, then up to three different developing solvents can be used for development. To keep in mind here is we keep the gas phase constant, uh, no, sorry, <laughs> we keep the gas phase under control and the gas phase can also be used to further optimize the separation. So the module development has on top five bottles. One bottle is for the waste, then we have one bottle for the activation, it's called humidity bottle. And we have three bottles for up to three different developing solvents, or one bottle can also be used to have the cleaning solution. The gas phase can be actively circulated during chromatography. This is really an innovation that was never possible before. How is the gas phase generated? It's generated in this so-called conditioning tube. And the conditioning tube can be filled with a 
same developing solvent as used for development, but it can be also filled from another bottle that allows you to even change the selectivity during the chromatography. For our customers who have already methods developed with a ADC2 or twin trough chamber, methods can be easily transferred from twin, twin trough chamber to the module development. On the left side you can see an example on normal phase and on the right side on reversed phase. The transfer to, get the same, to mimic the same conditions can be adjusted by preconditioning and conditioning during chromatography. How to do this is explained in a scheme in the instruction manual. So usually on normal phase the preconditioning will decrease the RF values and the conditioning during chromatography will increase the RF values. So further information you can get from the instruction manual. Beginning of 2021, we will launch the module plate storage. The module plate storage is needed to feed the HPTLC Pro system with clean plates. It consists of two stacker. So the upper part, the stacker in the upper part can hold the clean plates and the stacker in the bottom part will hold the process plates. And with the module plate storage together with the module application and development, the chromatography can already run autonomously and process five plates without manual intervention. Here you can see again the entire HPTLC Pro system. Now I would like to give you a summarizing overview about the individual modules. So the module application has been launched in 2019 and it harbors further improvements like the laser controlled needle distance. Um, the syringe is rinsed with two different solutions to have a proper cleaning and the second rinsing solution is also used to generate the separation bubble to prevent cross-contamination. Then in 2019 was also, has also been launched a module for development and the module development has a completely new design chamber geometry. In this chamber the gas phase can be actively circulated that allows to control the chromatography to keep the gas phase under control and also to use the gas phase to further optimize the separation. Then what will come is the module derivatization. The module derivatization will use the same principle as Carmax derivatizer. It has a patented piezo electric spraying nozzle. This spraying nozzle generates micro droplets that are homogeneously distributed over the plate. And after the spraying, the module will clean the nozzle and the plate can also be heated inside the module. It has an integrated heating unit. Then another real innovation will be the module for detection. In the module detection, we will use hyperspectral imaging as technology. And this allows you to get at any point on the HPTLC plate the entire spectrum from 200 to 1000 nanometer. Then the last module launched will be the module MS interface. In there the illusion head can move to the position that is selected via the Vision Cat software. The eluted zones can be collected in a fraction collector or it can be directly transferred to a mass spectrometer. Further information can be uh, is provided on the website kamak.com. So who are the target groups for HPTLC Pro? The HPTLC Pro was designed for routine quality control laboratories that have a high sample throughput that have large number of samples per day. This can be in the pharmaceutical industry, for example, to have an efficient screening method to perform limit tests to screen for impurities. It can be food testing labs or contract laboratories providing analytical services. And any lab that needs efficient screening methods, especially for complex samples. Next, I would like to present you the concept of comprehensive fingerprinting. 
So how are plates evaluated and how are data generated? So a big advantage of HPTLC is we extract once our sample, we do the application and the chromatography. And then after chromatography, the solvent is evaporated. But everything is there. We have the application position, the separated components and the front position. And all sample components are still available. They are archived on the plate and therefore they are available for multiple detections. We can detect prior and after derivatization. In some cases we can even do a sequential derivatization and we can do effect directed analysis. So one separation and access to multiple data. So when we talk about comprehensive HPTLC fingerprinting, then we are not only talking about identification. For identification of plant materials, HPTLC is well known. After derivatization, you can get a typical chemical pattern of separated zones that can be used to identify the plant material. Is it of the same species or another species? But this fingerprint also harbors information about the content and the purity. So the idea of comprehensive fingerprinting is we have one sample separated and analyzed multiple times. We have the images, we have the profiles of the images, we have the profiles from scanning densitometry. Soon we also have the images, profiles and spectra from hyperspectral imaging. So many data set, um, large data set that can be used to not just identify to also get the information about assay, how much is in there, and is it pure enough, or is there something added, is there an adulteration. Here you can see an animation about our vision for the future. So we have one separated sample and detected multiple times. And this Multidimensional data can be used to define unique acceptance criteria for each method. But then also we have the intensity of selected zones to get the quantitation of the marker compounds. And also if there are additional zones or zones absent, we can check the purity. So in the future, the software should tell you, is your sample okay or not? Is it a pass or a fail? You have your sample analyzed. You can define for each method unique acceptance criteria, and this can be like a template. And if your sample matches in this template with the number of zones and also in the right intensity, then it's a pass. If not, it's a fail, and the software will tell you, hey, there is something wrong, have a look at it. Karmak has a completely new website since last year and there is a lot of useful information for HPTLC users. On the website you can find information about the different application fields and within each typical application field you find case studies, you find uh, typical an analytical tasks, you can find matching methods and also customer testimonials and besides this we have a lot of application notes that are PDF files that you can download and use. Then at Education, Carmack offers scientific publications, tutorials, and webinars, and training courses. Also there you will find our CCBS literature database. So this literature database contains abstracts dealing with TLC and HPTLC methods. And in each entry, you will find the information about how to do this test, which plate was used, which developing solvent, and how it was detected. Twice a year, we launch our CBS journal, and in there you find typical application examples from customers, and one example in each issue is from our laboratory. So if you need support, then you, can, then you have the choice between technical support and analytical support by our laboratory. Our laboratory has also collaborations worldwide and we support talented students during their bachelor, ma master or PhD thesis. Now I would like to welcome back Dr. Eike Reich, the president of the HPTLC Association.
Hello, Dr. Eike. I have a question for you. Do we still need these old techniques like HPTLC? Good question. But we might rather ask, what for do we need these old techniques? I think they have proven themselves very useful over many, many decades and they are still in use for simple analytical questions. TLC costs nothing and is very simple. You have an answer in almost no time, but these answers are mostly preliminary. When you talk about HPTLC, we are talking about a different entity. And I think this new technique, HPTLC, which is a standardized version of TLC, has its place as well. And it has a different place. It has the place of routine analysis. So is there something unique about HPTLC? Yes, of course there's something unique about HPTLC because it utilizes the planar principle and this is what makes TLC so universally applicable. And the other aspect is that HPTLC is highly standardized, which means we are getting reproducible data day in, day out, laboratory to laboratory. But other techniques can of course do that as well. The uniqueness is that we use that multi-dimensional image that we can generate from a TLC plate in an HPTLC setting where everything is standardized and we can take this multi-dimensionality into another dimension. We can compare images that are taken from one plate and compare with images taken from another plate. We can also use images as electronic standards and compare analysis done in a lab against such an electronic standard. The collaboration across labs, across multiple plates, is possible using HPTLC. And that is something that other techniques really don't have developed so far. And what about the evolution of HPTLC? The history and the development of HPTLC can be summarized as follows. HPTLC plates in 1975, then the academic period, which culminated in the Journal of Planar Chromatography in the late 80s, then the increasing standardization of the technique and the introduction into the pharmacopoeias starting in this century, and finally, the event of introducing specific chapters on HPTLC in the United States and the European Pharmacopoeia. And from that on, the increasing acceptance of HPTLC as a standardized technique in the pharmaceutical quality control. So, where and how can I get in touch with HPTLC experts? This is a rather simple question. Of course, there is the HPTLC Association, and you find us on the website hptlc-association.org. We have chapters in different countries, and you can ask experts in your local language. But of course, you can always send email to our info line. If you have technical questions, it's always easy to contact CAMAC. We have a well-established laboratory with experts with great experience in all fields of application. We are available by email or by phone. And if you have technical needs, then you can call our service line or send questions at info at How can HPTLC compete with HPLC? Well, this question is around since the late 80s, when HPTLC was at a peak and HPLC was just developing. And the question was always about benchmarking. And I think when we talk about benchmarking, we need to have certain questions in mind. That is sensitivity, linearity, reproducibility, and these things. But I would rather not look at a competition between the techniques because, because although they are different forms of liquid chromatography, they are actually complementary. 
and we should look for the advantages of each technique and utilize the technique where it is especially powerful. So the most powerful elements of course of HPTLC are that we have multiple images or multiple evaluations available from a single plate. This information can be combined in a so-called comprehensive HPTLC fingerprinting. On the other hand, we can always rely on a visible or visual evaluation of the result and the analyst can quickly see what is different between two samples. When we're looking for the quantification of specific markers, I would recommend to use HPLC because this is the strength of that technique. The fingerprint, the HPTLC fingerprint, the comprehensive HPTLC fingerprint, gives you a more holistic overview of the total composition of a sample. And in that sense, it is more um, comparable to, for example, an NMR fingerprint, where the entire information of a sample is somehow captured. There, we would need to have computers to sort all these things out because NMR is a rather predictable but entirely complicated technique. When you look at evaluation of an HPTLC chromatogram, as I told you, we can have a look at this and see what is good and what is bad and what is different, what is similar between multiple samples. The multiplicity of samples that can be compared is also a very strong point because we can compare across plates, that means across instruments and across laboratories. HPLC has difficulties with this. And a final question for you. What do you predict for the future of HPTLC? The future of HPTLC will depend on how well the new concepts that have been developed will be received by the analytical world. The future I see in the comprehensive HPTLC fingerprinting, in developing data that describe quality in a new way. We have possibilities in here that we cannot fully imagine yet because the technology doesn't really exist. However, when we just predict what we are able to do with conventional HPTLC equipment, we can already do a lot. Now, with an automated system like the HPTLC Pro, we see the reproducibility of analytical data increased. With hyperspectral evaluation of the separated substances, we will be able to dig further into the information that is in that fingerprint. And by putting this together with the multiple analysis of multiple samples, including maybe artificial intelligence for making analytical statements, we have all things that we need to have a revolution in planar chromatography. Thank you, Eike, for the interview and thank you to the audience for your attention. So please also have a look at our YouTube and LabTube channels. There are many videos about applications and also product videos available. And now I'm open to receive your questions.